While many people may use Bluetooth every day, the majority don't know how it works. Today, we'll check out three built-in tools in Kali Linux to explore and do some recon on Bluetooth devices on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Bluetooth is everywhere, and although it shares the same 2.4 GHz frequency as Wi-Fi, the properties are subtly different because the protocols are not quite the same. Now, the reason for this is enhanced security and a couple features that make it so that the common hacking tools that we use on Wi-Fi just won't work on Bluetooth. Now, one thing is that they're constantly hopping frequencies. So if you have two devices communicating over Bluetooth, they're both using an algorithm that they understand that shifts the frequency many, many times per second. This means we can't simply sit on one frequency and listen because they're going to be hopping all over the place. So it makes it difficult for an attacker to listen in on the conversation in the first place. Another property of Bluetooth is that Rather than negotiate a key every single time like Wi-Fi does, uh, making it easy for a bunch of people to join and leave a Wi-Fi network, it basically negotiates a key once at the beginning, stores the secret key, and then will refer to it every time it sees the same device. Now that means that it's impossible to simply sit there and sniff the key because you need to be there the first time these devices communicate. Otherwise, you're not going to get anything useful and it's impossible to jump into the, into the conversation the way you can with Wi-Fi. Now, in spite of this, we can still track nearby Bluetooth devices. We can read from them, and we can even write certain characteristics. And because of this, it's useful to do this reconnaissance in case we can either take control of the device, identify a vulnerability, or in the future, find a vulnerability that matches up with one that is nearby. Now, in order to do this, you'll need a fully updated version of Kali Linux installed, because we're going to be using Bluetooth tools and keep it super basic, so we're not installing anything extra, and we can just work with the tools that Kali Linux will have by default. Once you have your Kali Linux version installed and it's fully updated, then we can get started. Now today we're going to take a look at some default tools included in Kali Linux that we can use to get an idea of Bluetooth devices nearby. Now this might seem innocuous, but doing some initial recon is the first step of any engagement. And when it comes to Bluetooth devices, we might be able to learn that we can escalate what we're doing or that there might be some specific vulnerability once we more, learn a little bit more about what's around us. So if we go ahead and click on applications, oops, it might not be immediately apparent that there are some uh, Bluetooth hacking tools built in. We can look at wireless attacks and nothing immediately stands out as Bluetooth related. So, no, I don't, I don't want Bluetooth. Or I don't want Burp Suite. Now you're not going to see it if you search IPA or ifconfig because it's just not there, like the Bluetooth device doesn't show up. This is for Wi-Fi devices and or uh, Ethernet devices, and it's just not going to be uh, available. Now, if you're familiar with ifconfig, there is another tool that is similar for Bluetooth devices, and it's, it's HCI config. So here we can see a Bluetooth interface, and this is what we'll actually be using in order to do all the things that we want to do with Bluetooth. Now you notice that its current state is down, which means that it's not able to do anything. So the first thing we need to do in order to work with Bluetooth is to bring our interface up. Now you might remember that if we have a Wi-Fi interface that's plugged in, but it's not up yet, we can type ifconfig and then the name of the interface and up. And since uh, this is basically the same thing as ifconfig, we can use a lot of the same commands. In fact, let me just see if there's a man page. I haven't checked. Well, that's ifconfig. Let's do, it's fine, HCI config. There we go. So here we can see in the man page that this is used to configure Bluetooth devices. So if you have an external Bluetooth device or something plugged in, you can also use that to see the devices that are connected and configure them appropriately. All right, so let's go ahead and press Q to quit this. And we'll need to go ahead and actually take our Bluetooth device we've discovered and bring it up. So very predictable command. We'll just type the name of the device we found, HCI0, and up. Okay, 
So now I'm gonna go back up. And if we just run this command again, then we should be able to see it is now up and running. Great, so we have our device up and running. Now, what can we do with it? Well, there's a number of different things we can do with it. And we can also use the HCI tool to do things like scan. So let me see if there's a man page for HCI tool. Yeah, cool. Okay, so HCI tool uh, is used to both configure and also do various things like scans, inquiries, pull names, uh, and that's really useful to learn about the device. You can see we can pull info, but some of these require a MAC address in order to use them. So let's take a look at some of these commands and first we'll do an inquiry. So we'll go back to, to HCI tool and then we'll go ahead and type inquiry, actually let's do a scan. So this will use the Bluetooth interface to scan for nearby Bluetooth devices and present their MAC address for us to do additional uh, scans, inquiries, or attempt to get the name of the device. Now here, we're actually seeing um, an OBD2 connector, which is connected to a vehicle, uh, which is pretty interesting. So we have the MAC address. I can go ahead and copy the MAC address here. And now we can do another command that required us to have this MAC address in order to run. So one that we can do is name. Well, actually, let's do the MAC address and then name. Oops, I guess it's the other order. This should allow us to get the name of the device. And of course, we already knew it from that first scan. But if we didn't know it before, it'll allow us to be able to learn more about it and kind of enumerate more things like the, the services and that sort of thing. So speaking of services, if you want to learn more, we can use a tool called SDP tool to browse a little bit more uh, into the kind of what's available on the device and learn about the properties, maybe what we can and can't do. So in order to do that, we can, well, again, need to use the MAC address, but we can type, well, let's see, an SDP tool. Cool. There's man for this too. So this lets us configure uh, and control and interrogate S. DP servers. So this is something that allows us to do queries on Bluetooth devices and figure out exactly what is going on with the uh, permissions and what uh, we can probably start to do uh, with the services available on the Bluetooth device. So pressing Q, let's go ahead and type SDP uh, tool and then browse. And then the Mac address we captured. Oops. SDP. There we go. Oh. Oh. There we go. Okay. So we can see a little bit more information about the communications, the protocols, and perhaps we could even start to discover whether or not there's a vulnerability in this device, or if we're able to directly communicate with it, and uh, maybe even discover whether it's using perhaps MAC address randomization or something like that. Great, so we've learned a little bit more, uh, and now it's time to move on to the last tool we're gonna cover, which is a full-on graphic user interface in order to discover Bluetooth devices. Now, this is called BT Scanner. And once we start it, we can just type BT scanner. And there we go. This might look kind of similar to people who are familiar with the Kismet interface, which basically uh, kind of allows us to do a lot of stuff in the command line format without require, well, still kind of getting a, a GUI type of feel. Now, this is really useful and cool because it means that with by typing I, we can start doing an inquiry scan and find nearby devices that are Bluetooth and uh, could allow us to maybe, I don't know, connect or send a command or something like that. So we found a device uh, and it's the same Bluetooth device we found before. And I'm sure that we'll be able to find some other devices as they roll in, but for now, we can go ahead and just press enter to learn about this particular device. And up oh, there we go, we, we found another one too. Uh, actually, that's the same one, but that's fine. So here we can see the name of the device when it's first seen, the owner, which is interesting, 
uh, and then some more information about the various features that are being advertised. If we want to go back to the main window, we can press Q, and as other devices are discovered or as they come in range, we can discover them here and start to learn more about uh, what these devices are doing, what they're communicating with, and kind of what else they are capable of. Now, if you don't have Bluetooth on your computer, you can always plug in a Bluetooth adapter, but you might want to check to make sure that it's compatible before uh, you go ahead and go through the trouble, because I'm not sure that every Bluetooth adapter is going to work with every Linux program. Now here you can see we found a second device, so just for good measure, let's go ahead and click on this. And we can see that this is a smartphone, it's a Samsung device, and it has a lot more capabilities and things we could do with it potentially than our first device did. So already we're able to reach out and start looking at different devices, we can start to learn about them, maybe the software running behind them, and certainly see the services that they're advertising in order to understand whether or not it represents a good attack service. All of this is done with a fully updated version of Kali Linux, and we didn't have to install anything. So if you're starting fresh with Kali Linux, this is a great way to use some of the built-in tools to reach out and touch Bluetooth devices around you and start to learn more about what each one of these versatile and powerful tools is capable of. While today we mostly explored Bluetooth reconnaissance, there are some more advanced things we can do with this information. Many Bluetooth devices don't bother to randomize their MAC address meaning it'll be the same all the time. This can be used to track a person from place to place, and some Bluetooth devices by design will not do this like tile Bluetooth trackers in order to, for example, find a lost item by anybody who has the app running. That means that that person is trackable and there is no way to turn this off. So if you want to opt out of this kind of tracking, make sure to disable Bluetooth on devices like a cell phone, but for devices that naturally have it turned on like a tile tracker, there's really no option other than to just leave it at home. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you have any more questions about this, you can check out the article linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.